for the format of this B at least, uh, this is just an elimination round. So if you do misspell in most cases, you'll be eliminated, but um, there are some cases at the end of the B where uh, that might not be the case, but we'll just kind of let you know as we go. And um, if you do get out, um, you're free to leave at any time. So if you do want to watch the B, you can just keep watching on this Bell Pundit Facebook page. Uh, so this is kind of an obvious rule, but obviously uh, you're just not allowed to get help from any other external source from like a phone, computer, or another person. So just make sure that you're the one that's spelling the word. And uh, just during your turn, um, probably the most important rule we have is just to make sure that you keep your hands up in the view of the camera like this. Uh, that's just, again, for fairness sake. And so we just ask that you keep uh, your hands up just uh, throughout the time that you're spelling. And so for each word that you get, you'll have two minutes to spell it. And once you get down to the last 30 seconds, we'll tell you that you have 30 seconds left. And then um, from that point on, you can't ask questions. Uh, so you just have to start spelling. So if you do want to ask a root question, uh, you have to give us three things. So you have to give us the root, the actual root itself, uh, the meaning of the root, and the language of origin of the root. So if you get all three of those parts right, we'll tell you that uh, that's correct. But if you get like some of them right or um, it's unclear, then we'll tell you that you're on the right track. But if you're completely off, then we'll just say that we don't see that here. Uh, so if you do want to take a break, uh, just make sure that you take a break right before or right after your word, sorry, um, or just well advance of uh, your turn in the next round because we don't want to have to wait for people to give their words. Uh, so if you do have any technical issues, um, it will just kind of be handled on a case by case basis, but um, we'll try to work with you as best as possible. Uh, so if you do have any appeal, um, the best way to do that is just through the Zoom chat so you can send it to the Spell Pundit like Zoom host account. Um, but it's best to just get those in by the end of the round because um, we'll mostly look at appeals at the end of the round. So if you can just get it in before then, that would be the best. Uh, so as for the qualification from this group, we're gonna take four students to go to the grand finals tomorrow. Um, and so just out of the 25, we'll try to finish with four. And so uh, just the last thing that we have is um, we'll try to like make any decisions that we can, but at the end of the day, um, whatever decision that we come up with is the final one. And so that's pretty much all we have. Ready to start? I'll just call it the number. So 004, you're first. Um. <clears throat> Hi, your word is improvisatrice. Improvisatrice. May I have the definition, please? Yes, it means a woman who composes or performs verse extemporaneously. Improvisatrice. This word has a homonym, by the way. May I have the language of origin, please? It's from Italian. Improvisatrice. May I have the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Improvisatrice. May I have the sentence, please? Patricia had all the passion and rich inventiveness of an improvisatrice. Improvisatrice. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one. Improvisatrice. 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 I am he are o v i s a t r I C E. Improvisatrice. That is correct. 
Thank you. Next speller is speller number nine, zero, zero, nine. Uh, hello. Hi. Your word is noggle flu. Noggle flu. Can I have the definition? Noggle flu means a massive variegated conglomerate forming a prominent member of the Miocene series in the Alps. Noggle flu. Can I have the language of origin? This is from German. German. Noggle flu. Noggle flu. N A G E L F L U H. Noggle flu. That is correct. Next speller, speller 11. Hi. Could you please put your hands in the frame? Yes. Your word is Bahuvrihi. Uh, can I have, the, can you repeat the pronunciation, please? Bahuvrihi. I may I have it in a sentence? The compound words bluebell, highbrow, and red coat are all examples of Bahuvrihi. Bahuvrihi. B A H U V R I H I. Bahuvrihi. That is correct. Speller 13? Yes. Could you please put your hands in the frame? Your word is ketoniaster. Can you repeat, please? Ketoniaster. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Yes, there are. It could be pronounced Cotoniaster or cottoniaster. Uh, may I have the language of origin, please? New Latin from Latin plus New Latin. Can I have it in a sentence, please? The cotoniaster hedge in Susan's front yard is looking pretty with bright red berries. P A T I O N A S T R E. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is C O T O N E A S T E R. Congratulations for making this far. Speller 24. Hello. Your word is egrotat. Egrotat. May I have the language of origin? I'm sorry, the pronunciations are egrotat or egrotat, and the language of origin is Latin. May I please have the definition? It means a medical certificate testifying that a student is unable to attend lectures or examinations as a result of illness. Can you repeat the pronunciation, please? Egrotat, egrotat. A E G R O T A T, Egrotat. That is correct. Next speller, speller number 26. Speller number 26. Are you there? Let me check what happened. It seems that speller 26 isn't here. Don't see them in the participants list. Yeah, I don't see them. Yep. In that case, speller 30. Hi. Hi. Your word is Darmstadium. Darm Stadium. Can I have all the information? Darm Stadium is a noun. 
It's new Latin from a German geographical name. It means an artificially produced radioactive element having a half-life of about 10 seconds. And the sentence is, the darn stadium is represented in the periodic table by the symbol DS and the atomic number 110. Darm stadium, D A R M S T A D T I U M, darm stadium. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 31. Hi. Your word is Salma Gandhi. Can I have the definition, please? Yes. Salma Gandhi means a salad plate of chopped meat, anchovies, eggs, and assorted fruits and vegetables, often arranged in rows for contrast and dressed with the salad dressing. Can I have the language of origin? French. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There's Salma Gandhi or Salma Gandhi. Salma Gandhi. S A L M A G U N D Y. Salma Gandhi. That is correct. Speller number 44. Yes, I'm ready. Could you please put your hands in the frame? Okay. Your word is Ray Kamye. Ray Kamye. Yes. May I have your definition, please? A backless couch typically having a high curved headrest and a low footboard. Can you repeat the word? Ray Kamye. What's the language of origin? It's from French. R A Y K A M I E. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is R E C A M I E R. Good job for making this one. Thank you. Speller number 50. Your word is Olecranon. Olecranon. Can I have all the information, please? Yes. Olecranon is a noun. It's New Latin from Greek elements. It means the bony projection of the ulna behind the elbow joint, also called the funny bone or crazy bone. And the sentence is, patients with long-standing gout may have tophi over the olecranon. Olecranon. Can you hear me? Yes. Are there any? Oh, there's also an alternate pronunciation of olecranon. Could you please repeat both pronunciations? Olecranon, olecranon. Olecranon. O L E C R A N O. And Olecranon. That is correct. Speller 51. Hello. Put your hands in the back. This word has hum. Loop. This loop is a noun. It's French, probably of Germanic origin. It means a small magnifying glass used by jewelers and watchmakers. And the sentence is, a small screwdriver and loop were used to repair the watch. Loop. Can I have the language of origin? French, probably of Germanic origin. Loop. M -O -O. No. I'm sorry, the word was loop. L-O-U-P-E, -E. loop. That is correct. Speller 57. Yeah, yeah. Could you please put your hands in frame? Yeah. Your word is carsorafi. Um, repeat the word, please. Carsorafi. Um, definition, please. 
a surgical procedure in which the eyelids are partially sewn together to narrow the eyelid opening. Okay, um, where does this word come from? New Latin plus French. Right, uh, could you use this in a sentence? A tarsorophy may be performed to protect the cornea in cases of corneal exposure or damage. Okay, um, okay. Repeat the word one last time, please. Tarsorophy. Tarsorophy. T A R S O R R H A P H Y. Tarsorophy. That is correct. Dollar seventy three. Speller number 73. Oh, 73 is absent. In that case, speller 78. Hi. Your word is Fratula. Can you repeat the word, please? Fratula. And I have the language of origin. Italian, from French, from Latin. Um, can I have the definition, please? A form of Italian comic or amorous song, especially from the 15th and 16th centuries, that has the music repeated with each verse. Fratula. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There's fratula or fratula. Fratula. F R A T E L A U. Fratula. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is F R O T T O L A. Congratulations on making this one. Thank you. Next speller. Speller. 80. Hello. Hi. Could you please put your hands in the frame? Yeah, sorry. Your word is Jack Minow. Jack Minow. Could I please have all the information? Yes. Jack Minow is a noun. It's from a French name. It means a moderate red color, also called raspberry red. The sentence is, Ronnie decided to paint her study room's wall in Jack Minow. Thank you. Jack Minow. Could I have the, all the pronunciations and the definition one more time? The only pronunciation is Jack Minow, and the definition is a moderate red color, also called raspberry red. Thank you. Jack Minow. Jack Minow. J A C Q U E M I N O T. Jack Minow. That is correct. Next speller, speller 81. Hello. Your word is Typhon. Typhon, may I please have all of the information? Yes. Typhon is a noun. It's from a trademark. It means a brand name used for a metal diaphragm that is used especially in signaling during a fog at sea. The sentence is, the cruise ship company installed a Typhon to avoid huge delays. Typhon. E-Y-F-O-N. Typhon. That is correct. Thank you. Speller number 85? Yes. This word has a homonym. Crew. This crew is a noun. It's from alteration of Middle English. It means a private organization that sponsors festivities such as balls and parades during Mardi Gras. And the sentence is, the crew is famous for huge floats with national celebrities. Can you repeat the word, please? Crew. 
Does this word does have any um, alternative pronunciations? No, just the one. Crew. Crew. Can you uh, repeat the language of origin? It's an alteration of Middle English. Crew. C R O U. I'm sorry, the correct spelling is K R E W E. Good job, the Next speller, speller 89. Yes. <clears throat> Your word is Kakasti. Can I have the origin? Kakasti is American Spanish from Nahuatl. Can I have all the information? Yes. Also, could you keep your hands in the frame? Pecosti is a noun. It's American Spanish from Nahuatl. It means a square wooden packing frame or crate that has four legs and a net cover and is carried on the back, especially by Guatemalan indigenous people with the help of a tumplin. And the sentence is, Jenna's grandfather has a portrait of a Guatemalan with a Pecosti in a market. Kakosti. Kakosti. C O C C A S T Y. Kakosti. I'm sorry, the correct spelling is C A C A X T E. Good job for making this part. Next speller, speller number 94. Hello. Your word has the homonym. The word is Ureus. Ureus or Ureus is a noun, New Latin from Greek. It's a stylized representation of the sacred asp appearing on the headdress of ancient rulers as a symbol of sovereignty. The sentence is Eva wore a headband with the winged disc and the Ureus for the Halloween party. Uh, can you please repeat the word? Ureus or Ureus? Ureus. E U R I O U S. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is U R A E U S. Uh, good job for making this. Um, speller number. Let's see, 95? Uh, yes, hello. Your word also has a homonym. The, the word is mandrel. Mandrel, can you please give me all the information? Yes, mandrel is a noun. The first part is Middle English and the second part is probably from a native name in West Africa. The definition is a large fierce baboon of Western Africa with the male having blue ridges on each side of the red bridged nose. The sentence is, just think of the red stripes on the scowling face of the male mandrel, Africa's largest monkey species. Mandrel, am I pronouncing the word correctly? Sounds about right. Mandrel, M-A-N-D-R-I-L-L, -L. mandrel. That is correct. Thank you. Speller number 98. Hi. Your word is Gallardia. Gallardia. May I have um, the language of origin, please? The first part is New Latin from a French name, and the second part is New Latin. Gallardia. May Are there any alternate pronunciation for the word? Gallardia or Gallarda. Gallardia or Gallarda? Gallardia or Gallarda? May I have the definition, please? An American plant of the daisy family, which is cultivated for its showy red and yellow flowers. Gallardia. Am I pronouncing that right? It sounds about right. Gallardia. G A I L L A R. D I A, Gallardia. That is correct. 
Rockefeller 103. Speller 103. Uh, yeah. Your word is heautophany. Can I have all the information? Yes. Heautophany is a noun. It's from Greek. It means self-revelation or manifestation of the self. The sentence is, Jonathan's memoir offered disappointingly few moments of heautophany. Does it come from the Greek like fan, meaning to show? Um, you're, yes, or you're on the right track. Does it come from the Greek I meaning self? Yeah. Um, heautophany. Come from the Greek I mean condition. Sorry, what did you say? Uh, does this come from the Greek I meaning condition? Um, I don't think so. Heautophany. H E A U T O P H A N Y. Heautophany. That's correct. Speller 108. Hello. Your word is Wainscot. Wainscot. May I have all the information, please? The pronunciations are wainscot or wainscot. It's a noun, it's from Middle English. It means the lower three or four feet of an interior wall when finished differently from the remainder of the wall, as with wood panels, tile, or marble slabs. The sentence is, Vanessa chose marble tiles for the wainscot in the dining room. Wainscot, W-A-I-N-S-C-O, T. Wainscot. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 109. Hi. Could you please put your hands in the frame? Could you um, please put your hands in the frame? Um, are they not in? Oh, oh, oh sorry. I was looking at the wrong person. Your word is pellerine. Pellerine. Can I have the definition, please? Pellerine is a woman's narrow cape of fur or cloth with long pointed ends in front. Pellerine, can I have the language of origin, please? This is French from Latin. Pellerine, can I have the part of speech, please? Noun. Pellerine, does this come from the Latin in meaning relating to? Uh, no. Does this come from the French in meaning relating to? I don't see that here. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There's pellerine or pellerin. Pellerine. Pellerine. P E L E R I N. E, Pellerine. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 116. Hi. Your word is Varsovian. Varsovian. Can I have the definition? It means a graceful dance similar to a mazurka and popular in many European countries, Mexico, and the US, or the music for such a dance. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just Varsovian. Can I have the language of origin? This is French from a Latin geographical name. Can I have it in a sentence? The Varsovian originated around 1850 in Poland. Varsovian. V A R S O. V I E N N E, Varsovian. That is correct. We can just go to round two, take one after.
Spell our number four. Um, hi. Hi. Your word is hashures. Hashures. May I have the definition, please? The short parallel lines drawn on a map to indicate topographic relief. Um, may you repeat the word, please? The word is hashures. Hashures. May I have the language of origin, please? French. Hashures. May I have the part of speech, please? Hashures is a plural noun. Hashures. May I have the sentence, please? Hashures. The sentence is. The cartographer added little descriptions to the hashures on the map to indicate a steep drop in the elevation of the valley. Hashures. May I have the definition, please? The short parallel lines drawn on a map to indicate topographic relief. Hashures. May I have the sentence, please? The cartographer added little descriptions to the hashures on the map to indicate a steep drop in the elevation of the valley. Um, may I have the part of speech, please? Plural noun. Hashures. May I have the language of origin, please? French. Hashures. Hashures. H A C H U R E S. Hashures. That is correct. Thank you. Speller number nine. Oh, hello. Your word is Toppies Yay. Toppies Yay. Can I have all the information? Yes. The word is pronounced Toppies Yay. It's a noun. It's from French. It means a dealer in or maker of heavy hand woven fabric with pictorial designs that's used for curtains and upholstery. The sentence is the tapisier had several impressive woven pieces of different goods that hung on the wall in the store. Tapisier. Wait, hold on. It's tapisier. Tapisier. Am I pronouncing pronouncing it correct? Tapisier. 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 T A. P E S S I E tapisier. I'm sorry, the correct spelling is T A P I S S I E R. Good job for making this far. Speller number 11. Hello. Your word is Becca Steer. Uh, may I have all the information, please? Yes, Decca Steer or Decca Steer is a noun it's french from two greek elements it means a metric unit of volume equal to 10 cubic meters and the sentence is the students learned the cubic meter to decasteer conversion in the class may you repeat the word please decasteer can i are there any alternate pronunciations decasteer decasteer d e c C A S T I R E. Degastir. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is D E C A S T E R E. Good job on making this far. Speller number 24. Hello. Your word is. Pachometer. 
Pachometer. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Sounds about right. Can you please give me all the information? Pachometer is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. The origin is international scientific vocabulary from two Greek elements. The definition is an instrument for measuring the focal power of lenses. And the sentence is, Jason used a phacometer to view the reflection from the surface as he couldn't see it properly with his own eyes. Could you repeat the language of origin? International scientific vocabulary from two Greek elements. Could you repeat the word, please? Phacometer. Phacometer? Am I saying uh -huh. right? Phacometer. Wait, I think listen to the beginning sound. Phacometer. Phacometer? Phacometer. Phacometer. Yeah, I think that's fine. Phacometer. Could you repeat the definition of phacometer? Yes, it's an instrument for measuring the focal power of lenses. Speller, you have 30 seconds. Phacometer. F O C A M E T E R. Phacometer. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is. E H A C O M E T E R. Good job for making this fun. Speller number 30. Hi. Your word is balancel. Balancel. Can I have the definition? It's a Mediterranean coasting and fishing boat with a single Latin sail. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just balance L. Is this from the French feminine diminutive venting L? Um, it's not listed in the origin. Is this from the French masculine diminutive venting L? And neither of those are listed. Can I have the part of the speech, please? A noun. Balance L B. A L A N C E L L E balance L. That is correct. Good job. Thank you. Speller 31. Speller 31. Yeah. Your word is isochime. I saw Kim. Am I saying it right? Sounds about right. Can I have the definition? Can I have all the information, please? It's a noun. It's probably French from Greek elements. The definition is a line on a map connecting points that have the same mean winter temperature. And the sentence is an isothere is the line of equal mean summer temperature, and an isochime is the opposite. Isochime. Am I saying it right? Can you please repeat it? Isochime. 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 Yeah, that sounds about right. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just isochime. Isochime. I S A C H I M E. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is I S O C H E I M. Good job for making this far. Speller number 50. Hi. Your word is Seicento. Seicento. Can I have all the information, please? 
Seicento is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's Italian from Latin elements. It means the 17th century with reference to Italian art and literature of that period. The sentence is, Venice experienced a growing reputation for great artists in the early Seicento. Seicento. Could you please repeat the definition? The 17th century with reference to Italian art and literature of that period. Seicento. S-E-I-C-E-N-T-O. Seicento. That is correct. Speller number 51. Hello. Your word is aroleum. Can you please repeat the word? Aroleum. Can I follow the information, please? Yes. Aroleum is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's New Latin from Latin. It means a lobe resembling a pad or cushion that is projecting between the tarsal claws of many insects. The sentence is, the entomologist observed under a microscope a well-developed aroleum of the insect almost as long as its tarsal claws. Uh, can you keep your hand? Can I do language of origin? Yes, it is New Latin from Latin. A-R-O-L-I-U-M, Aurelia. That is correct. Speller 57. Um, yes. Your word is Myrmidon. Um, what is the language of origin? Latin. Okay. Um, what is the definition? A myrmidon is a follower or subordinate of a powerful person, typically one who is unscrupulous or carries out orders unquestioningly. Um, so, okay. Repeat the word one last time, please. Myrmidon, and the, um, the etymology is Latin from Greek. Okay, um, can you use that in a sentence, please? Each Myrmidon followed his request under the watchful eye of their superior military leader. Okay. Um, what part of speech is it? Noun. No. Okay. Um, okay. Could you repeat the definition? A follower or subordinate of a powerful person, typically one who is unscrupulous or carries out orders unquestioningly. Okay. Um, Repeat the word. Myrmidon or Myrmidon. Hmm. Okay. Um, Myrmidon. M E R M. A D O N, Myrmidon. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is M Y R M I D O N. Good job for making this far. Speller number 80. Hello. Can you please put your hands in the frame? Oh, yeah, sorry. Your word is Philuminist. Philuminist. Can I please have all the information? Yes, philuminist is a noun. The first part is Middle English from French, from Latin, from Greek, plus a Latin part, plus an English part. The definition is a person who collects matchbooks or matchbox labels. And the sentence is, Sam's uncle is a philuminist who collected over a thousand matchboxes from 15 countries in 20 years. Phil, you missed. Um, could I have the origin one more time? Middle English from French, from Latin, from Greek, plus Latin, plus English. Thank you. Philuminist. Can you say the word one more time? Philuminist. Philuminist. 
The middle part isn't loom, it's just loom, just for your reference. The luminist. So like that? Yes, voluminist. Voluminist. Okay. Thank you. Voluminist. P H I L U M I N I S T. Voluminist. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is P H I L L U M E N I S T. Good job for making this one. Speller 81. Hello. Your word has a homonym. The word is chasse. This chasse is a noun, it's from French. It means a gliding step in dance or figure skating in which one foot is kept in advance of the other. The sentence is, the audience clapped when the ballet dancer performed the chasse step with ease and grace. Chasse. C H A S S E. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 95. Uh, hello. Your word is palesthesia. Can you please give me all the information? Yes. Palesthesia or palesthesia is a noun. It's New Latin from two Greek elements. And the definition is awareness or perception of vibrations, especially as transmitted through skin and bones. Sentence is, the doctor performed the palesthesia test on the patient to identify disorders within the neural pathways of his brain. Okay, uh, palesthesia? Palesthesia. Palesthesia. That sounds about right. Uh, can you please repeat the definition in the language of origin? Language of origin is New Latin from two Greek elements. The definition is awareness or perception of vibration, especially as transmitted through skin and bones. Sorry, uh, one more time. Can you please repeat the pronunciation? Palesthesia or palesthesia? Palesthesia. Am I pronouncing the word correctly? Um, sounds about right. Okay. Palesthesia. P A L E S T H E S I A. Palesthesia. I'm sorry, the correct spelling is P A L L E S T H E S I A. Good job for making it. Thank you. Speller 95? 98, you mean? I mean 98. Yes. Your word is philocell. Philocell. May I have the definition? Actually, no, the language version, please. French from Italian dialect from Latin. Philocell. May I have the definition, please? Soft silk thread used especially for embroidery. Philocell. Does this come from phil in Latin, which means string or thread? Yes, it does. Okay. Fill a cell. Fill a cell. Are there any alternate pronunciations for the word? Yes, there's fill a cell, fill a cell, fill a zell, or fill a zell. Okay, fill a cell. Does this come from French L, which is a female diminutive ending, like feminine? It's not listed here. Okay, fill a cell. May I have all the information again, please? Philocell, philocell, philozel, or philozel is a noun. It's French from Italian from Latin. It, mean, it means soft silk thread used especially for embroidery. And the sentence is, Caroline embroiders her, 
her son's initials in fill a cell on the jacket so that none of the other kids would take it home. Fill a cell. Fill a cell. Am I pronouncing that right? It sounds about right. Okay. Fill a cell. F I L O S E L L E. Fill a cell. That is correct. Speller 103? Uh, yes. Your word is marmorial. Marmorial, can I have all the information? Marmorial is an adjective. It is Latin plus English. The pronunciations are marmorial or marmorial. The definition is made of or likened to marble, especially in coldness, smoothness, or majesty. The sentence is, the renovation of Susan's house was completed with floors made of marmorial and natural stone. Marmorial. M-A-R-M-O-R-E-A-L. Marmorial. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 108. Hello. Hi. Your word is Ranso. Ranso. Am I saying it correctly? Sounds about right. Okay. May I have the definition, please? Ranso is an ornamental motif consisting of branching leaves and florals found in classical architecture. Okay. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just the one. Ranso. Ranso. R I N C E A U. Ranso. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 109. Hi. Your word is imparasyllabic. Can I have the definition, please? especially of Greek or Latin nouns, not having the same number of units or of sound or production in all its inflections. Sound or pronunciation in all of its inflections. Imparasyllabic, does this come from the Greek M meaning not? Um, you're on the right track. Does this come from the Latin M meaning not? Yeah. Does this come from the English word syllable, which is a be in a word or a breakdown of a word? Um, we, I don't know if we can really answer that, but you have the definition. Uh, does this come from the Greek ik meaning relating to? Uh, again, you're on the right track. Imparasyllabic. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Imparasyllabic or imparasyllabic? Does this come from the Greek para meaning beside? No. Imparasyllabic. I M P A R I S Y L L A B I see imparasyllabic. That is correct. Thank you. And speller 116. Mm -hmm. Your word is veterino. Can you repeat the word? Veterino. Veterino. Can I have the definition? A person who drives an Italian four wheel carriage. Can you use it in a sentence? The Vetturino ensured that the tourists and their luggage made it safely from Florence to Rome. Can I have the language of origin? Italian from Latin. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just Vetturino. We have the definition again. A person who drives an Italian four-wheel carriage. Can you repeat the word? Vetturino. 
Veterino. V E T I R I N O. Veterino. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is V E T T U R I N O. Good job for me this way. All right, yeah, so that's the end of the round. Uh, so we had 17 start at the start, uh, seven misspelled. So we had 10 uh, spells remaining. So I uh, would we'll take we can take a five minute break and then uh, start at like 1150. Your word is gallimaufry. Gallimaufry. May I have the definition, please? A confused jumble or medley of things. Hodgepodge. Gallimaufry. May I have the part of speech, please? Noun. Gallimaufry. May are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just gallimaufry. Gallimaufry. May I have the word in a sentence, please? Andrew enjoys a gallimaufry of activities and hobbies rather than just one specific thing. Gallimaufry, may I have the language of origin, please? Middle French. Gallimaufry, um, may, I uh, may I have the definition again, please? A confused jumble or medley of things. Hodgepodge. Gallimaufry. Am I pronouncing it correctly? It's Gallimaufry. 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 Can I have, um, may I have the sentence, please? Andrew enjoys a Gallimaufry of activities and hobbies rather than just one specific thing. Gallimaufry. G A L L I M A U F R Y Gallimaufry. That is correct. Good job. Thank you. Speller 30. Hi. Your word is so z. So z. Can I have the definition? So z is a person having the exact likeness of another, a double. Can I have a language of origin? French from a French fictional name from Latin. So Z, are there any alternates? No, just so Z. So Z, can I have all the information, please? So Z is a noun. That's the only pronunciation. The origin is French from a French fictional name from Latin. The definition is a person having the exact likeness of another, a double. And the sentence is, Ryan's uncle is his father's so Z. So Z S. O Z I E, so Z. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is S O S I E. Good job for making this one. Speller number 50. Hi. Your word is redhibition. Could you please give me all the information? Yes. The pronunciations are redhibition or redhibition. It's a noun, it's French from Latin. It means the nullification of a sale and the return of the article sold by the buyer because of some material defect. The sentence is, Patrick hired an attorney who specializes in redhibition as the computer he bought recently doesn't work well. Could you please repeat the pronunciation? Redhibition or redhibition. What's the language of origin? French from Latin.
Red Habition. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Red Habition. What's the language of origin? French from Latin. Red Habition. R A T I H A B I T I O N. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is R E D H I B I T I O N. Good job for making this far. Color 51. Hello. Your word is Liotricus. Can I have all the information? Yes, liotricus is an adjective. It's new Latin from two Greek elements plus English. It means having smooth, straight hair. And the sentence is, liotricus hair is normally seen in people of Asian and European descent. Can I have new language of origin, please? New Latin from two Greek elements plus English. Liotricus. Can I have the definition? Having straight, smooth hair. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just liotricus. Liotricus. L-I-O-T-R-I-C-U-S. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is L E I O. T R I C H O U S. Good job for making this one. Well. Feller 81. Hello. Your word is motitation. Motitation? Yes. May I please have all the information? Motitation is the only pronunciation. It's a noun, it's Latin plus English. It means a quivering movement. And the sentence is, a biting wind blew in Amy's face as she opened the car and caused the motitation of her lower lip. Motitation? Motitation. Motitation. M O T I T A T I O N. Motitation. That is correct. Thank you. Feller 95. 98, you mean? Uh, this time I believe it is 95. Yeah, it's 95. 95? Or. Uh, I think 95 is uh, made a mistake yeah. last time. Yeah, 98. Yeah. Okay, we got to mark it. Yep. Um, wait. Yeah, just keep going in the, okay. in the sheet. Well, 98. Your word is cassette. Cassette. May I have the etymology, please? French. May I have the definition, please? A small strip or thin slice into which beets are cut as part of the sugar making process. Cassette. Cassette. May I have the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Cassette. Does this come from the feminine diminutive ending et? In French. Um, yes. Okay. Cassette. May I have all the information again, please? Yes. Cassette is a noun. The other pronunciations are cassette or cosset. It's from French. It means a small strip or thin slice into which beets are cut as part of the sugar making process. And the sentence is Martha fried each potato cassette in very hot oil until brown. Cassette. Cosset. C O S S E T T E. Cosset. 
That is correct. Speller number 103. Uh, yes. Your word is asinaceous. Can I hold the information? Asinaceous is the only pronunciation. It's an adjective. It's from two Latin parts. It means having many small seeds or kernels as of grapes or grains. The sentence is the acinaceous grapes don't require any additional growing techniques to maintain, unlike seedless grapes. Acinaceous. Yes. Um, acinaceous. 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 This come from the Latin asinax and grape. Um, no. Asinaceous, can oh, I hold the information? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it, it does. Can I hold the information? Asinaceous is the only pronunciation. It's an adjective. It is from two Latin parts. It means having many small seeds or kernels as of grapes or grains. The sentence is, Asinaceous grapes don't require any additional growing techniques to maintain, unlike seedless grapes. Asinaceous. A C I N A C. I O U S. Um, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is A C I N A C E O U S. Good job on good job for making this far. Speller number one o eight. Hello. Your word is adsetitious. Adsetitious. May I have all the information, please? Hang on. Just one sec. Adsetitious means originating, derived, or acquired from something intrinsic. intrinsic. The adsetitious is the only pronunciation. It's an adjective. It's from New Latin from Latin. And the sentence is, um, the behavior is considered an adsetitious habit rather than an inherent taste. Adsetitious. Can I have the definition again? Adsetitious means originating, derived, or acquired for, from something extrinsic. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just adsetitious. Adsetitious. A D S C I T I T I O U S. Adsetitious. That is correct. Thank you. And speller 109. Hi. Your word is bisonosis. Bisonosis? Yes. Can I have the definition, please? An occupational respiratory disease associated with inhalation of cotton, flax, or hemp dust and characterized initially by chest tightness, shortness of breath, and cough, and eventually by irreversible lung disease. Can I have the language of origin, please? New Latin from late Latin from Latin plus new Latin. Does this come from the Latin bis, bisin, meaning like linen? Yes, it does. Does this come from the Greek osis, meaning process? Um, yeah. Bisinosis. Can I have the part of speech, please? Noun. 
Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just bisonosis. 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 B Y S S I N O S I S. Bisonosis. That is correct. Thank you. All right, so we had nine to start off that round and three misspelled. So we're still, we still have six spellers. Um, we'll take just like a two minute break and just start at 1210 again. Okay, we can get started again if everyone's ready. So, um, I right, guess so whenever the judges come back, it'll be 004. Speller 004. Hello. Your word is solferino. Solferino. May I have the definition, please? It means a moderate purplish red that is redder, darker, and slightly stronger than average rose. Solferino. May I have the language of origin, please? Yes. Solferino is from an Italian geographical name. Solferino. 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 That sounds about right. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just Solferino. Solferino. Can you keep your hands up? Um, may I have the part of speech, please? Noun. Solferino. May I have the sentence, please? Allison decided to paint her room Solferino. Solferino. May I have the language of origin, please? Italian geographical name. Solferino. May I have the definition, please? A moderate purplish red that is redder, darker, and slightly stronger than average rose. Solferino. Solferino. S O L F R I N O Solferino. That is correct. Thank you. Feller 81. Hello. Your word is Opadel Doc. Opadel Doc. May I please have all of the information? Opadel Doc is the only pronunciation. It means any of various soap liniments, especially an unofficial camphorated soap liniment of a soft semi-solid consistency. The um, origin is New Latin from Greek plus New Latin of unknown origin. And the sentence is, the opadel duck was scentless, but still got you clean. Opadel duck. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just Opadel Doc. Opadel Doc. O P O D E L D O C. Opadel Doc. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 98. Here. Your word is Balintawak. Balintawak. No, no. 
I'm sorry. Balintawak. Balintawak. Is this of Javanese origin? It's actually Tagalog. Okay. Balintawak. May I have the the definition, please? A native dress of Filipino women consisting of dress and skirt woven of local fibers with a kerchief and apron to match. Balintawak. Uh, may I have any alternate pronunciations, please? Balintawak is the only pronunciation. Okay. Balintawak. May I have it used in a sentence, please? Yes. The gift shop in Manila had many a beautiful Balintawak. Balintawak. B A L I N T A W A K. Balintawak. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 108. Speller 108. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Is Kookaburra. Kookaburra? Mm hmm. Okay. May I have the definition, please? A kingfisher of Australia that is about the size of a crow has a call resembling loud laughter and feeds in part on reptiles. Kookaburra. Am I saying it correctly? It's actually kookaburra. Kookaburra. Am I saying it? Kookaburra. 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 Okay. Kookaburra. K-O-O-K-A-B-U-R-R-A. Kookaburra. That is correct. Thank you. And Speller 109. Hi. Your word is escritoire. Escritoire, does this come from the French feminine war, meaning one who does? I don't see that here. Uh, can I have the definition, please? A piece of furniture resembling a bureau or a combination bureau and bookcase and providing a writing surface or a desk area. Does this come from Latin scribere, meaning to write? Yes, it does. Um, can I have the language of origin, please? Escritoire is French from, middle La from medieval Latin. Uh, can I have the part of speech, please? Noun. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just escritoire. 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 Mm -hmm. Escritoire. Escritoire. E S C R I T O I R E escritoire. That is correct. Thank you. All right, so that's the end of the round. Five spellers, five spell correctly. Oh, we'll just go on to the next one. And for the judges, we can go to the round three sheet. Okay. Speller four. Hello. Your word is Entrefer. Entrefer. May I have the definition, please? An air gap between the armature and the field magnets of a dynamo or motor. Entrefer. May I have the language of origin, please? French. Entrefer. May I have the part of speech, please? Entrefer is a noun. Entrefer. May I have the word in a sentence, please? The engineer decided to transfer the electrical energy through a small entrefer to lower the maintenance costs. Entrefer. May I have the definition, please? An air gap between the armature and field magnets of a dynamo or motor. Entrefer.
May I have the part of speech, please? Noun. May I have the language of origin, please? French. Uh, may I have the sentence, please? The engineer decided to transfer the electrical energy through a small entrefer to lower the maintenance costs. Are there any altern alternate pronunciations? No, just entrefer. Entrefer. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Entrefer. 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 E N T R E F A I R. Entrefer. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is E N T R E F E R. Good job for making it this way. Thank you. You should stay on the line, okay? So don't go. Yeah, plug off. Speller 81. Hello. Your word is trieteric. Trieteric. May I please have all of the information? Trieteric is a noun. It's from Latin. It means a festival that occurs every third year, especially one honoring Bacchus. The sentence is, the, in Athens, the rites were performed during the trieteric with an idle year between performances. Um, can you repeat the language of origin? Latin. Does this come from the Latin word tri meaning three? Yeah, it does. And can you repeat the definition? It means a festival that occurs every third year, especially one honoring the god Bacchus. Try it here. T R I E T E R I C. Try it here. That is correct. Thank you. Speller number 98. Okay. Your word is patera. Patera. May I have the etymology, please? Latin. May I have the definition, please? A shallow bowl or dish, especially one used ceremonially by the ancient Romans in pouring libations. Patera. Patera. May Are there any alternate pronunciations for the word? No, just patera. Patera. Is it patera or patera or patera? Patera. That's the only pronunciation. Okay. Patera. Patera. May I have all the information again, please? Patera is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from Latin. It means a shallow bowl or dish, especially one used ceremonially by the ancient Romans in pouring libations. And the sentence is, Augustus has been performing, pouring a libation from an enameled patera in honor of a deity. Patera. Patera. P-A-T-E-R-A. -E patera. That is correct. Speller 108. Hello. Your word has a near homonym. The word is interessi. It's a noun. It's from medieval Latin. It means a legal right, title, or share in property. And the sentence is, Tina retained the interessi in the property from her father's will. Interessi. 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 Mm. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Interessi is the only pronunciation. Okay. Interessi. Interessi. I 
N T E R R E C Y. Interesting. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is I N T E R E S S E. Thank you. Siona, stay on the line, okay? Speller 109. Hi. Your word is penelian. Penelian? Penelian. Penelian? Penelian. Penelian? Mm -hmm. Can I have the definition of the etymology? The etymology is Welsh and the definition is originally improvised, but now usually traditional Welsh verses and melody sung in counterpoint to a familiar tune played on the harp. Pernilion? Mm -hmm. Are there any alternate pronunciations? No, just Pernilion. Can I have the part of speech? Plural noun. Can you repeat the definition, please? Originally improvised, but now usually traditional Welsh verses and melody sung in counterpoint to a familiar tune that is played on the harp. And can you repeat the language of origin, please? Welsh. Panillion. Am I saying it correctly? Panillion? Panillion. 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 P. E N I L L I O N. Panillion. That is correct. Thank you. Um, so we had five spellers, uh, three spellers spelled right. So uh, those three spellers will go to the finals, but um, I think we'll just do a tiebreaker between the two spellers that misspelled. So um, we'll just do that and the other three spellers you're free to go. And I guess we'll see you tomorrow then. But yeah, so 004 and 108, we'll just do a tiebreaker between you guys. And <laughs> Just a minute. Yeah, uh, Simone, you got it. Yeah. Speller four, your word is syncytium. Syncytium. May I have the definition, please? A multinucleate mass of protoplasm resulting from fusion of cells as in the plasmodium of a slime mold. May I have the language of origin, please? New Latin. Syncytium. May I have the part of speech, please? Noun. Syncytium. May I have the sentence, please? The syncytium is formed by fusion of an infected cell with its neighbors. Syncytium. May I have the definition, please? A multinucleate mass of protoplasm resulting from fusion of cells as in the plasmodium of a slime mold. Um, does this come from the Greek sin meaning together? Yeah, it does. Syncytium. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? There's syncytium and syncytium. 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 Am I saying it correctly? Syncytium. Syncytium. S Y N C Y T 
I U M Sensitia. That is correct. Thank you. Speller 108. Your word is isepeptesis. 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 No. Isepeptesis. 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 Yeah. Can I have all the information, please? Isepeptesis or Isepeptesis or Isepeptesis or Isepeptesis is a noun. It's from New Latin. The definition is a line on a map or chart connecting localities reached at one date by different individuals of a species of migratory bird. And the sentence is, the ornithologist is collecting data for the Isepeptesis of the Pacific region. Okay, isopeptesis. 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 Sounds about right. Okay, isopeptesis. I S E P I P T E S I S isopeptesis. That's correct. Okay. Let's do another round. Speller four. Your word is barouche. Barouche. May I have the definition, please? It means a light horse-drawn carriage used especially in the 19th century. Barouche. May I have the language of origin, please? It's German from Italian, from Volker Latin, from Late Latin, from Latin. Barouche. May I have the part of speech, please? Noun. Barouche. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Yes, there is barouche or barouche. Barouche. May I have the sentence, please? Philip has a portrait of his great-grandfather with a barouche by his side. Barouche. May I have the definition, please? A light, horse-drawn carriage used especially in the 19th century. Barouche. B. A. R. O. U. C. H. E. Barouche. That is correct. Thank you. And speller 108. Mm -hmm. Your word is Kyleon. Kyleon? Mm -hmm. Can I have all the information, please? Kyleon or Kylian are the pronunciations. It's a noun from New Latin, from Greek. The definition is the point where the upper and lower lips meet, the corner of the mouth. And the sentence is the inflammation and fissuring of the Kyleon is a very painful experience. Kyleon. Okay. Can I have the definition again? The point where the upper and lower lips meet in the corner of the mouth. Kyleon. C H E I L E O N. Kyleon. I'm sorry, but that is incorrect. The correct spelling is C H E I L I O N. Congrats for naming this spot. Mm -hmm. All right, so with that, um, we're done with this group. So 004, uh, you'll be the final speller moving on to the grand finals tomorrow. So congrats on that. Thank you. Thank you.